so just when I thought I was done making videos about the Acolyte, something just had to pull me back in. Now, the whole universe knows by now that the Acolyte, the Star Wars series that was created by former assistant to Harvey Weinstein, Leslie Headland, has been canceled after season one. There will be no season two. But for some reason, that's just not good enough for one of its stars. Who is that star that I'm talking about? Well, that would be Amanda Steinberg. Steinberg, Stenberg, however you pronounce her last name. She played May and Osha with the same facial expressions all throughout the show. So let's back up here, shall we, a little bit, just to add a little context. The act like canceled, no season two for Disney Plus, the Star Wars series. Fans were upset. Well, a minority of fans were upset. Those of us in the YouTube space, we were hoping we would get a season two. Just saying. But as you can see, the audience didn't like the show. I mean, this, this show on the popcorn meter over Rotten Tomatoes got as low as 12%. I think it might have even scratched down to even 10 at one point. But now it's sitting at 18. It's probably going to sit at 18 for forever. Now, those of us that take the emotion out and use logic and reason can understand why this show has been canceled. It's, it's right there. It's obvious for all to see. It's because it didn't generate views. The views dropped after the first week, the first two episodes. The show is far too expensive and didn't draw an audience. And it didn't receive enough widespread fan support. Now, some fans will say, but, but, look at this change.org petition to renew the Acolyte. We got 58,000 signatures. Great. Good for you. I'm happy for you. Wonderful. But now let's get to Amanda Stenberg, or Steinberg, or whatever her name is. She had to put out a little video the other day. In fact, she put it out yesterday, which I'm not going to play the video, but just to give you an idea, this is the girl, this is the person that halfway through the series released a diss track to combat racism. The racist fans, the bigoted fans. Now, I'm going to say this. There's a line you don't cross, okay? If some people cross that line as it pertains to Amanda, shame on you, okay? But there are those of us out there that were vocal about the show not being very good, and it wasn't because of anybody's color, race, creed, whatever. It's because the writing sucked. The acting sucked. The pacing sucked. The show sucked. Granted, it was great for content to talk about. But to say that anybody that hated, that did not like this show is a ist or an ism or a bigot or a misogynist or a homophobe. Come on, man, please. Can we just stop with the BS? Those things do not, those things 10 years ago may have affected people and got them to back down, it don't work no more. Just saying. So Amanda Stenberg puts out this video, and I'm not going to play the video, but I'm Culture Crave over on X. He, he took the time to um, put this post on, on Twitter and transcribe. So Amanda Stenberg speaks on the Acolyte, or hashtag the Acolyte getting canceled. It's not a huge shock for me that this was canceled. Of course, I live in a bubble of my own reality, but for those who aren't aware, there has been a rampage of vitriol that we have faced since the show was even announced. 
Well, Amanda, I suggest you get out of your bubble and open your eyes. Because here's the thing. Nobody had a problem with the show because of your race, your color, your creed. People had a problem with this show because you, yourself and Leslie Headland and others came out and dissed the fans from the get-go. She continues, when it was still just a concept, no one had even seen it. That's when we started experiencing a rampage of hyper-conservative bigotry and vitriol, prejudice, hatred, and hateful language towards us. This really affected me when I first got the job because it's just not something, even though I anticipated it happening, it's not something you can fully understand what it feels like until it's happening to you. It wasn't conservatives. It wasn't hyper-conservatives that attacked you. See, conservatives generally don't attack others. People that are lunatics attack others. And I can, say, I can speak for myself. I can speak probably for some others in the YouTube sphere. We wanted a show, we wanted a Star Wars show that was Star Wars. We wanted a show that told a story that had character development. But instead, this show was intentionally put together to check off boxes. I've said it once, I'll say it a thousand times. When you put a show together just to check off boxes, it's not gonna do well. It's been an incredible honor and dream for me to be in this universe, and I just want to let those people know out there who supported us in that way and supported us vocally in the face of all the vitriol that we received and the kind of the targeted attack I would say we received by the alt-right, just that you were deeply loved and appreciated, and it made this job all the worthwhile for me. And I have to thank Leslie Headland, former assistant to Harvey Weinstein, I just effing love that bitch. One of the best people in the world. She's so incredibly talented and unique. I will love this experience with her forever. Again, when you go after the fans and the fans respond, it's not because of your race, your creed or color, your ethnicity. It's not because of those things. It's because you attack the fans and you did you attack the fans. Cause you put out a diss track. And for you, 58,000 people over on change.org. The reason the show was canceled is because it didn't draw eyeballs. It didn't draw viewership. It didn't do well in the ratings. Now I get it. There have been shows in the past, mostly on the major networks that didn't draw well in ratings that got a second season, a third season, a fourth season. In fact, I know of one that's been around for 22 seasons. That would be NCIS. It didn't do well its first couple of seasons in the ratings, but it found a footing in season three and now it's in season 22. So yes, it can happen. But enough, enough of blaming the fans. There's a lot of people that are my age, and I'm not afraid to say it. I'm going to be 53 here in a couple months that grew up on Star Wars. We know what George Lucas's vision is and was, or was and is. And honey, this ain't George Lucas's vision. Fire in space, lesbian space witches, the immaculate conception of lesbian space witches. This ain't it. So 
that's my two cents. I mean, I, I thought I was going to be done making videos about the acolyte, but Amanda Stenberg had to put herself out there again to blame the fans. I mean, you just go down the comments. Master of the TDS, love his work. Let's get one thing straight here. You marketed the show by flaunting its divisiveness and attacking fans before it even aired. Now you can throw around all the buzzwords you want, but the facts remain. The show was canceled because of low viewership and an outrageous cost. Bingo. Your show just sucked, Amanda. It wasn't a certain group of people that attacked you. It was Star Wars fans being vocal about the poor writing, acting, wardrobe sets, lore breaking, etc. Maybe another fan diss track will fix it. Didn't it get canceled because of low viewership? So that's just a few of the, the comments on this post from Culture Crave. So there you have it, folks. You can agree with me. You can disagree with me. Whatever. Comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. While you're at it, please take the time to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thank you, everyone, both returning viewers and new viewers, for checking out this video. And with that, I'll see you guys later.